Thank you very much, Jack, for that most generous introduction. Um, hashtag, my name is Matt Eagles. Now, first of all, I'm going to do a bit of a disclaimer. If you see my, my feet moving like I'm doing the river dance, I'm not actually auditioning for Michael Flatley's next role. I've already got it. <laughs> OK. So I'm a patient engagement advocate with Parkinson's. Not very surprising, I hear you say. But if I told you I'd had Parkinson's for 41 years, you might be, pleasant, might be surprised. Now, it's, as Jack has already said, Parkinson's is a neurodegenerative disease largely associated with older people. I'm not old, as you can see, and I was seven years old, eight years old when I began getting the symptoms. Parkinson's affects every part of my daily life, from getting up and trying to have a shower, to cutting myself shaving, to spilling milk on the work surface as I try and make my wife a drink, then having to mop it up to try and get my son's breakfast ready, twitching and dropping it in the dog's water bowl and he won't eat it, for obvious reasons. <laughs> and even computer, I can't type on a computer if I'm twitching, I can't hold a mobile phone, and if I do, the person doesn't last very long on the other end because I'll twitch so much my ear will cut them off. It's, it's not all doom and gloom though. It really isn't, but it's my every day. It's, it happens to me every day and I can't, there's nothing I can do about it really. Um, I'm just gonna try a little experiment with you guys. I hope you don't mind. Um, and I'm sure you've all done it before, but there is a method behind my madness. I want you to greet the person next to you and just ask them how they are and listen to their response. Uh, 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 that's great, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Right, now how many of you actually answered that question honestly? If you knew the person next to you, you probably did, but if you, if you didn't know the person next to you, you were probably a bit guarded, maybe a bit shy, didn't want to reveal anything. Let's face it, not, people aren't 100% all the time. It's not wrong to say you're not feeling at your best. But would they have listened if you'd have said it anyway? That's the question. My story now that I'm going to be telling is full of honesty. It's real life, and it's not always pleasant. But it's me, and hopefully through speaking today, I'll get people talking about ageing and the process of ageing and trying to delay it and I'll raise awareness of how, what, what it's like actually to live with Parkinson's. Now, my story begins uh, in the summer of 1977. A very good summer, very hot summer in the UK, I, I remember it well. But I couldn't stand up at school. My headmaster noticed my legs were buckling beneath me and he didn't know why. When I was at my swimming lessons, I was almost standing up swimming because my legs had just sunk. When I was having my toenails clipped by my mother, she clipped me around the ear because I couldn't balance and I kept on trying to hold on to the towel rail. She thought I was fooling around as you would have somebody aged eight, but I genuinely wasn't. And I can still remember the pain felt in my cheek from the, from the slap across my face. And now I believe me, I really can. She, she, but I love my mum to death, by the way, don't get me wrong about that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, it was, it was an interesting start because, because the most visible aspect of it was my legs buckling at the knees and my lack of balance. They assumed it was arthritis of my knees. Um, I had various scans done. It wasn't arthritis of my knees. Um, I went to, I spent a lot of time in Booth Hall Children's Hospital in North Manchester in Blakely. Um, Monday to Friday, I was in hospital having things done that I didn't really know what was going on. I didn't really want to be there and I could hear the cries of all the other children in the ward. Um, not a pleasant time, not a happy time for me because they simply didn't know what was going on with me. 
Um, I went to Manchester Royal Infirmary because I thought, and Salford Royal because I thought I had got a brain tumour. That was another option. But even though I was on the latest bit of kit, at the time there were only two MRI scanners in the whole country, and I'd got to use one of them, even though I equated it more to looking in a, the inside of a washing machine to a piece of high tech, that was inconclusive as well. But um, I was then referred, my parents sought a, sought a second opinion really, and I went to the Manchester Royal Infirmary, where two things of note happened. Firstly, I was given L-dopa therapy, which had been introduced in 1967, 10 years earlier, as a, as a help for people with Parkinson's, although I wasn't, strictly speaking, diagnosed at that stage. The second interesting thing that happened then, I was paid to take the tablets. My actual doctor thought I was so brave in trying this medication that he paid me 50 pence. And that, to me, I, who didn't really want to be there, didn't even know what was going on, that was that 50p to come to a hospital trip and actually get paid for going there. That was brilliant. Absolutely awesome. So, to my school days. I remember them fondly, but most of them were in slow motion. I used to love playing sport. I used to love playing in goal. But unfortunately, nine times out of ten, the ball had gone in the net before my brain had decided that it wanted to dive to try and save it. So I wasn't really very popular with my other fellow players. I, I thought I was a really good goalkeeper, but oh, I was always the last to be picked, unfortunately. I was bullied at school. People didn't understand why I couldn't walk and they could. And kids can be quite cruel to, sometimes. But again, I didn't know what was going on. And it didn't help that my teachers as well. One of my, my Latin teacher used to call me dead legs. I was 11 years old, and my Latin teacher called me dead legs. Another teacher called me sparrow legs. And these are guys who are supposed to educate you in life. Not very educational, I don't think, to be nasty to an 11 year old boy, but I sucked it up at the time. And it's now, I think, it's pretty poor form, and they wouldn't get away with it. Another incident occurred when I was dragged by my, co my colleagues, fellow pupils, into a classroom by my armpits, backwards. The maths teacher thought it would be a really good idea if she, if I, if she lay me in front of the blackboard on, at the front of the class and made me stay there the whole lesson. Even though I could have probably got up to my knees, crawled to the seat and got onto a seat, instead I had to lie down in front of the blackboard the whole lesson. I didn't enjoy that very much either. But having said that, I was lucky enough to grow with the Parkinson's. My body adjusted to the Parkinson's. I became stronger as I grew up. And one of my big things was I got very strong arms and I used to try and get a bit of street cred back by arm wrestling all the rugby guys. And I used to win usually. And in fact, the only guy that consistently beat me went on to play rugby for England and went on to become the director of rugby at Stade Francais in France, a guy called Richard Paul Jones. I wish I could have beaten him. I would have had a story to tell then, but unfortunately I didn't. Now, at this stage, I was still on the same medications as I had been when I'd been paid 50p to have them when I was eight years old. I was now 18, but I started suffering panic attacks. Uh, and ironically enough, it was at a football match, the love, of, the love of my life sport. And it was Manchester City against Arsenal, I remember it well. Most people after this week's results would be panicking anyway if they supported <laughs> Arsenal, or, Arsenal or Manchester City, but that's, that's by the by. But after some cognitive behavioural therapy, that kind of worked its way out of the system and I, got, and I got over that and got through that. Other medications, I've tried a lot. Apomorphine was probably the most bizarre. And that was to help the, the, the shelf life of my normal medication into my system. And I was taken as in a syringe driver form, where I used to have to put a needle into my side of my stomach and have a syringe driver in my pocket. Now, that wasn't very comfortable at the best of times, but it was the side effects that caused all the problems. A, if I was, if, when I was filling it in the morning, it would stain anything it touched, a horrible green colour. But more embarrassingly, I developed... Um, a Viagra-like reaction at the most inappropriate of times, 
particularly when I was at work. So it was Matthew, do you want to, could, it's your turn to make a coffee. Uh, I'm not thirsty, thank you. And I'd stay sat at my desk. Uh, but uh, when I did get a drink, I suffered from um, bad, well, <laughs> essentially I started twitching too much and I would just normally end up throwing my drink all over myself. Extreme startle, I think is the word for it. I developed extreme startle. And eventually, it got pressure told, and I, I guess I had, I had to come off it. It was causing me too many problems in my whole life. Anyway, I mean, having an extreme startle when you're working in a telesales environment, which made you jump every time a phone rang, was just not good, good for me. So the last time I actually took my needle out, uh, my apomorphine needle out, was when I was walking down the airfield at uh, Tilstock Air Base with a parachute on my back, and I did a 10,000-foot skydive, which is one of the proudest moments I've ever done. I've always, I'd always wanted to do it. But there was no way Parkinson's was ever going to stand in my way. And it didn't. And it's one of the most exhilarating experiences I have ever, ever had in my life. And if any of you fancy having a go, do it, please. It's wonderful. It really, really is. Right, just going on from that, I mean... I'm now in my 40s now, and I was, I'm wondering if anybody has any idea how many units of medication I've taken over the years. Anybody, any ideas? Can anybody su suggest, bearing in mind, I've been on medication since I was eight years old. So it's well over 30-odd 30, 30 years I've been taking, well, nearly 40 years I've been taking medications. I know you, most of you haven't got a clue, but I shall tell you anyway. It's 200, approximately 202,000 units of medication I've taken. Just imagine if I'd got 50p for every one of those. <laughs> Incredible. The breakthrough came for me was uh, 10 years ago, though, um, when I underwent some oper an operation called deep brain stimulation, which sounds pretty horrific, and I actually... When I watched the operation after I'd had it done, I didn't watch it before, um, I thought, well, that looks a bit grim. Don't fancy having that done. But at the time, I had ultimate, ultimate trust in my doctors. I had faith. I trusted them that well. Anything they suggested I did, I would follow re religiously, without, without fail. I, 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 knew, I knew they wanted to do the best for me. So I undertook the operation. Now... I'm now bionic, officially. I now have two electrodes in my head. I shall bend down and show them to the camera if, the, if anybody can see them there. I don't know whether you can. Two electrodes, they look like two little giraffe horns or two devil horns, I think you can say. And this, this is actually my, my remote control. And I put this on my chest and I can... Actually, I'll show it to the camera now. I can put it on my chest and I can actually alter the stimulation that's going through to my brain. Um, it's quite an astonishing piece of kit. It can, it can make me go from being unable to move if I switch it off, which I'm not going to do, unfortunately, today, <laughs> to um, actually be so twitchy I can barely stop moving at all of any of my limbs. Now, I don't know if there's any implications in this, but... Uh, Anybody that's watched Wallace and Gromit, The Wrong Trousers, um, it's very similar to that. It's like if somebody else has get, ever gets control of this, heaven forbid, <laughs> if you see me walking up a wall in a jewellery heist, it's probably because they're doing something they shouldn't. Now, I'd never get away with that anyway. But this actually has changed my life um, very much. It's not only given me back my dignity, where I can now get out of bed and go to the bathroom instead of foot rolling out of bed and weeing into a pot. And I can make no, no bones about that. That's how difficult it was. I couldn't turn over in bed. Um, it's really, really helped me gauge my symptoms together and, and can just generally control my own life. But having the dignity back of, of getting out of bed on my own, not, being able, not needing any help, I mean, this is th these are kind of things that you'd expect elderly people to, to be suffering, but it's not. It's, it's Parkinson's. It's my every day, or it was. Not anymore, I hasten to add, because it's enabled me to do some fantastic things. 
Because in the 10 years since I've had deep brain stimulation, I've been able to go abroad. I've been to Nepal. I've been to India. I took a wheelchair with me to India, um, which was all well and good. <laughs> but uh, people don't have, aren't used to seeing wheelchairs in India. So that was quite, a, quite an experience. But the main thing, I was able to photograph at the Olympics in London 2012. I was a football photographer, which was absolutely one of the best experiences I can possibly believe in. You got, I'm a football fan. I, I like photography. How bet, what better can you have than photographing Neymar playing for Brazil at Wembley? It was just absolutely awesome. My pictures were rubbish, by the way. <laughs> but at least I had a go anyway. But... Um, these experience, I'm now happily married, actually, by the way. I should, I should have mentioned that before. Um, but it's no thank you to the medications I've been taking alongside the deep brain stimulation, which I should mention it very, very quickly because I know we're getting near to the end of my allotted time. Um, they caused me to gamble really, really heavily after my wife had, had miscarried our child. And uh, it was one of the worst experiences in my life. And it was down to the medication, unfortunately. But my, and I, was spent, I wasn't married at the time, I was just about four months before getting married. I was spending the, the money we'd saved up to get married. I was being secretive and eventually I got so cocky with it all, I ended up playing video poker on my phone in, front, in the same room as my wife was. I won £7,000 and went, yes! And she looked at me and said, what are you doing? Fortunately, she forgave me, um, and very fortunately... I managed to get a, an appointment down in London with my specialist and I was weaned off the particular drug that I, that's causing all the problems and within three weeks, back to normal, same old Matthew. And my wife actually said to me, that wasn't you, Matt, that was a medication. And I thank her ever so much because we've been married for three years now without any problems. But <clears throat> all these experiences, both good and bad, have come around as a result of having a degenerative neurological illness and slowing down ageing so my body can stay resilient for longer. <coughs> Excuse me, would be absolutely ideal. Um, I've so much to it I want to achieve. I don't want to get old. I want to stay young, resilient and ready to do as much as I can for as long as I can. <coughs> Excuse me. But ageing's inevitable at some stage. But the longer degenerative diseases can be prevented from coming along, the better for everybody. And you people out there are the guys that can do it. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Thanks, Matt. Thank you. I've got a question for you. <coughs> Um, yep. How far would you go uh, to remove the symptoms that you've got or to even extend where you are uh, today for longer beyond what you already have, which is obviously quite an intrusive um, kind of therapy in your body? I actually see myself as a bit of a pioneer, actually. So I would, like, I would go... I would say I'd go virtually any, I'd do virtually anything to remove the actual symptoms, and particularly the, the twitching, which are unclear enough as a side effect of the medications I'm taking anyway. But no, I would do absolutely anything, Jack, just to say this is what you could, this is what you could be like, this is what could happen to you, this is how great your life can become. Fantastic. Um, I think huge round of applause for Matt. Thank you.